It does MVC, it does web pages, it does APIs. Uh, yeah, it does loads of different things. Uh, so first of all, it's free, because you know Microsoft, not necessarily free, but it's free like every other web framework. It's open source. It's, uh, you know, but it's not, you know, open source has different meanings. So it's not open source as in, here's the source code, but please don't talk to us. It's open source as in, you know, please come in, please send pull requests. It's a community uh, project. So, you know, it really is the same as every other web framework. It's not, no different to that. Uh, there's a list of features. Uh, it's cross-platform. Traditionally, .NET was Windows only, uh, but this is Windows, Mac, Linux. Choice of IDE. You can use command line tooling as well. Uh, fully open source, as I've covered. And really high performance. So the benchmarks of this are, are brilliant. It's a compiled language, and there's been a lot of optimizations from the community. Uh, so much like Go, it's compiled. You get static type safety. So you can take that compiled binary and run it on lots of different architectures. Uh, very easy to publish. You can put it in a Docker container, and you can make a self-contained uh, binary. So you don't need to install the framework on the machine you're going to run it on. It just puts it all together. And something very exciting that's coming is the native toolchain. So that's going to do something very similar to Go. It will give you one single binary. Everything is compiled, and you can compile it ahead of time to native machine code if you know the target architecture, and you can do some optimizations there. And it'll just give you one executable that you just drop on your machine, and it runs. But this isn't about .NET Core. This is about React and .NET Core. So why would you want to use .NET Core, or rather ASP.NET Core, which is the web side of things, with React? Uh, there's a few different reasons you might want to do this. Uh, first of all, you might want to server-side render your React app, so run it on the server, and generate some HTML to send to the client so it has something to look at before the JavaScript loads. Uh, and you can do this at build time, but then you just have a static app uh, and it, it, it must have placeholders for any dynamic data. Whereas if you render it on the request, you can render exactly what data you want and you wouldn't even need JavaScript and it would show the latest data. Uh, don't do this if you're building a progressive web app that's meant to be installed offline. That is a world of pain. Uh, you'll have horrible issues with debugging and caching, so just don't do it. Uh, <laughs> you might also want to use uh, ASP.NET Core to write an uh, API backend, so you're talking to your database and sending your JSON responses to the application, also providing authentication, user login, that sort of thing. Or something I'm going to talk about today is you might want to proxy an API. Not all APIs are suitable for using in a front-end web application. Uh, if it hasn't got cause headers, you won't be able to make cross-origin requests. The browser will throw a security exception and just won't talk to it because it's on a different domain. Uh, and yeah, unfortunately, a lot of APIs don't add these. Uh, you might want to trim down the payload. If it's a really large response, megabytes of XML maybe, you might not want to send that to the browser over a mobile data connection. Uh, a lot of APIs still have static IP authentication. That's a real problem, particularly in railway APIs. It's like, but we're in the cloud. We don't have static IP addresses. But it's like, well, that's how we authenticate. Uh, you might want to protect the tokens. You might not want to put your API key in code that the user has access to because they might pretend to be you. Uh, it also makes demos and testing a lot easier. You don't want to have to wait uh, for a certain response on the API if you don't have uh, the ability to mock things. Uh, also, a few other reasons. You know, redundancy, you might want to log the request and trend it over time. Uh, might want to add caching. You know, you think, oh, Surely it's distributed. But if you're writing an internal web application that's used on an intranet, all those requests are getting funneled out through your connection. You might get rate limited there. So you might want to proxy them. And finally, you might have to deal with a SOAP API, which is just, yeah, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> so, and yeah, these are very popular in the, in the railway world as well. Uh, right, so I'm just going to get on with a demo. This isn't a deeply technical talk. But first, a bit of background of what I'm going to build and why you would want to build it this way. Uh, so a bit of a spot of difference. Um, I took this picture at Black Friday the other day. Can you see? Well, two days actually. Anyone? I might, I might give you a bit of a bit of a help here. So it's a touch screen as well, so you can highlight stuff, which is really handy. Uh, but yeah, the, the tube status here is just an iframe, and something's gone wrong, and it's not found. Uh, so it would be better to do this in JavaScript on the front end, and you know, not put a big error page up if something goes wrong. Uh, here's some more examples of what might not go so well. Uh, there's a .NET Framework exception on the left. Uh, something's gone wrong with F3G connection on the right. Uh, or if you're using Windows, there's always the, the problem with blue screens. <coughs> this is at London Bridge. I haven't even finished building it, and it's already going wrong. Uh, so what about like a better example? 
Oh, by the way, you can follow like uh, these on Twitter, shit signage. Uh, there, I've got loads of these. Uh, so here's a better example. But the one on the left, clearly something's gone wrong with the news API. There shouldn't be a big blank space there. Uh, there should be some news. Uh, but it's still all working. There's the weather, there's the train information there, uh, and it's gracefully failed. It's been progressively enhanced. Uh, and you could argue with a state of the news these days, that's actually better. Uh, the one on the right, that was shutting down for over a month. That's, that's a bad idea. Don't, you, know, you want to recover quite easily. Uh, and I don't know why you'd put your, you know, your company name of a wallpaper. The only time people are going to see that is when something's gone wrong. So you really don't want to be promoting that. Uh, <clears throat> it's a bit more background. And my, my hello world of web applications is a tube state support. It's, it's what I use for you know, just testing any sort of technology stack. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a while. This one's, you can probably tell from the, what the iPhones look like, uh, but how old this is. But there's, a, there's a date on there if you can read it as well. So it, it pulls the API. And this was actually before TFL even had an API. It was like screen scraping uh, via a third party service uh, using PHP and XSLT and XML transforms. And yeah, I've, I've upgraded it over the years to do different technology stacks and yeah, taking an XML feed, which is now an official one, and uh, transforming that on the back end. And, and more recently using the unified API, which is cause enabled. And as a static React app, I've got a React app, React, uh, reacttube.com that pulls that in and just updates the static page. And there's, there's extra. So you can expand these, but you, you don't have to wait for Christmas Day, which I, I did here, for it to you know, actually test that it all works. Uh, so you can expand these and get the detail now, um, which isn't a slight enhancement. But what I'm going to do in the demo today is kind of step beyond this. So this is just a static web application that's pulling it over. If you load this and don't have JavaScript running, it just says loading. It, it has like a, a template there with all the lines, but it doesn't know what state it is. So we can probably improve on that. It's time for a demo. Right, so this is what we've currently got. And this isn't actually the real status. This is a, an API that I've mocked up. It, you know, it's not that bad at the moment. I'll show you in a minute what it really looks like. Uh, so there's a button to reload it. And this is why proxying an API or faking an API makes the demos a lot easier. But if we have a look at the source code of this, we'll actually see this isn't rendered entirely with JavaScript. There's actually all the information in the HTML here. And then you have your initial state as a JavaScript object at that point. So let's have a look at what this looks like. So it's a pretty standard uh, React app here. It's written in TypeScript. It's using Redux and Router and things. Um, so in the store here, we have this API. Can everyone see that? Do you want to make it a bit bigger? Or is, is that good? Is that too big? That's too big. So this is my API here. And I've written this API in .NET. So .NET has an MVC uh, approach. So this is our API controller. And I've got some classes embedded here that mimic what the real TFL API does. Uh, and these are also mimicked in TypeScript. And then I just have some random sort of things that get returned every time you query it. And there's a home controller, which rather than returning the API, returns a view, a result of the, uh, the web page. And here we're just returning this view, which isn't particularly interesting. But in the view itself, uh, we have some helpers. So there's this ASP pre-render module. And this little tag that you add on here will run node in the background and generate your app and inject it at that point. We look back in here, we can see that all this badly formatted code is with the application, and the rest of it comes from a view, or rather the layout, because this is embedded within this layout here. It renders the body at this point. So. It's fairly standard from a React point of view, apart from there are two entry points. We have this boot client, which is what runs in the browser. And then we have a separate one that's boot server. And this is the only difference. The rest of the app is entirely the same, front end and back end. But this runs it on your web server and generates your output and then puts that into your web page. And you may have noticed here, you can also add caching. So you can uncomment this. And that tells it, cache it for a minute. I don't want to regenerate it every time. And you can use a proxy in front of that, or there's a middleware you can use as well. So let's try and switch this from my fake API, which doesn't really have any, <laughs> any interesting things, to uh, the real one. So this just loads my store here. But if we look in the on here, if we can comment out my fake one and load the real one. 
save it. I'll try and reload this. So it supports hot reload, but because I'm recompiling the back end as well, I don't want it to get two different conflicting states of things, which is why I'm reloading it. <coughs> so we go back to this. And when this loads, it should be the real tube status, assuming my internet connection is working. That doesn't look promising, does it? <laughs> Unless things really are that bad. No, I think my internet connection's died. <coughs> Self-signed certificate. Oh, I think the internet connection here has hijacked. I did this earlier. I signed in earlier, and it's also... Oh, no. Let's go to BBC News, who still don't use TLS, so I can... Oh, I've got an HTTP everywhere thing on here. That's a problem. Yeah, I'll do that here. Accept. Because I didn't, well, I accepted it earlier. And yeah, oh, maybe I should buy some tickets. No. Uh, okay. Let's reload this. There we go. So that is now the real status. Now, the interesting thing about this is you can extend it. So. I have a cheat sheet here. Uh, so maybe I want some more exotic modes of transport. Because I, I really want to know what a cable car is doing at the moment. Because that wasn't a big white elephant. So let's, uh, let's reload this. So maybe you want to take the cable car later. It's not really a cable car, it's more of a gondola. But it's between uh, Millennium Dome, sorry, the O2, and uh, North Greenwich, and, and up to Excel. I'm surprised you don't know that. It's really useful. It's like such a great link. <laughs> so if I extend that, we now have, well, you can see it already, but we have the Emirates Airline and also all the National Rail statuses. So you can see in here. Oh, National Rail are not very good. They don't give you information. They're just like, go to our website to find out what's wrong. Uh, and boats as well. So brilliant. There we go. So, uh, there's an open source project I've built which proxies the uh, National Rail Live Departure Boards, which is an awful SOAP API, and turns it into a cross-origin JSON that you can use from your web apps. So you can just talk to this directly. And it also has the nice function that protects your API key. You can put that on the server, and so you don't have to put that on your web page and people start using up your allowance. Uh, so one of the web apps I built that uses this is called Instabail. It's a progressive web app. Uh, you can go to instabail.uk and you can install it on your phone. Say install, it's just a web page, but it runs offline. Uh, uses app cache and service workers, and it interfaces to the live departure boards to generate uh, realistic excuses about train delays. So if you want to <laughs> bail on something, say, oh, sorry, it was delayed. And also uses a TFL API to say if there's problems on the tube. Uh, and it generates a load of other stuff and just lets you easily send it. Um, so that's an example you might want to, yeah. An example application for these sort of things. Uh, yeah, so if you're interested in this, uh, I've got a book out, you can buy that. Uh, it's just not about, it's not just about .NET Core, it's about sort of web application performance in general and a lot of service workers, JavaScript, compression, networking, that sort of thing. Uh, so check that out if you're interested. Uh, that's the end. So thank you very much. And any questions?